Great. Hi, how are you today? Good. How are you doing, Sarah? Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking with me today. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you for talking with me. Oh, no worries. No worries. I'm really excited to talk to you today because this is just such an interesting season seven and I can't wait to get into it. So how does it feel to be returning to power and to this character? Really great. You know, I just feel like there's so many unexplored aspects of Tommy Egan that I was really excited to dive into. Um, also, like what makes Tommy Tommy now that he's this uh, kind of empty vessel because of the loss of all of his friends and family and um, uh, his drug empire, his affiliations with uh, the, the mob and with um, the Serbs and with the cartel, every all these things are broken off. What makes Tommy tick? What, how does he fill himself up when he's empty? And uh, a lot of those questions will be answered. So I think it's even more revealing within the psyche of the Tommy Egan uh, character. Absolutely. And um, it feels like a bit of a homecoming for you because we're moving the action to Chicago, which is where you're from. How does right. it feel to be returning home and, and taking power to a brand new city? I think that's it's really cool. It's an incredible aspect to take it. Uh, it's you know, obviously the only um, uh, show power, part of the power universe that's uh, not in New York. So that's really pretty cool. And uh, even though I haven't uh, had a permanent residence in Chicago for probably, oh God, maybe 25 years almost, um, it, it is where I was born and raised. So it was fun to be on some of the streets that I knew as a teenager and young man. And now we're shutting them down and I'm driving the old blue Mustang down them. So it was pretty surreal. And, and to work with all these incredible Chicago actors like Guy Van Swearingen and Anthony uh, Fleming III and uh, Chris Lofton, uh, who's homegrown as well, even though he's out of LA now. But um, it, it was it was pretty it was pretty amazing and, and a real honor. Absolutely, and I, I always find um, moving to Chicago is really fascinating because Chicago has this rich history of of crime and and gangs and stuff. Did you tap in? Did you do a lot of research into to what makes Chicago and its criminal underbelly? I did. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know a lot about it, and I'm I'm a hard worker, so I did a lot of research. Um, uh, whether the show got it right, that's not up to me because I don't write the show. Um, and uh, the writer, Chicago will let the writers know if they got it right or not, believe me. Um, so uh, we'll see. But um, I think that uh, in terms of Tommy and Tommy's headspace, I think that it's very new to him. So uh, I think we're going to watch Tommy discovering Chicago. And for me, um, why I did research into that was so I knew what I would be discovering and I knew the. Um, so I had the miles behind my eyes, you know? Uh, I went on uh, several ride-alongs with the police. I talked with guys who were former gang members and current gang bangers who were in prison, guy that was in prison for 16 years, just like Diamond, and to ask him questions. You know, what happened to the gang? How did you run the gang? Were you part of the gang? So I kind of knew all of that stuff. So I was able to um, <coughs> discover it. When I was able to discover it, I would know the answer, but I was able to discover it as Tommy. Um, and reacquaint myself with the city because I think the biggest mistake you can make is think that you can come back home again because the city changes without you and so you have to get back there to, to know it again so uh, uh, it was cool to be back you know and we'll see what how what how Tommy Egan Chicago what that looks like yeah it's very exciting I've only watched a couple of episodes but even the the first season watching him and he's like a powder keg of emotion already because of the emotional season finale and yeah. he just he's just on the edge and he's set off so many fireworks already instantly coming into Chicago. Yeah, I think as Tommy is wont to do, you know, even without trying, he, he really is that proverbial bull in a china shop. And <laughs> um, he does knock and bang into stuff, but he takes full responsibility. Like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I'm here. So, yeah, now you got to deal with me now, you know, or he's smart enough to just kick quiet, get out the way and let let that problem handle itself. So I think just his kind of his innate uh, street knowledge and, and um, just kind of his gut instincts are, are still still that same old Tommy. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, there's this scene in the car when he's just like, do you know what? I'm going to stay. It's just going to be yeah. my town. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, th I think we've all kind of been there when we're just like, you know, at our kind of at our lowest and not expecting things to happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, Voila, there it is, you know, Eureka. You get those re Eureka moments. And I think that Tommy specifically, because he lives so much in the present, those Eureka moments happen a lot. Even back in the power show when, when uh, you know, he realized when he wasn't working with Ghost anymore, hey, I can do this. I can run these things. Now he misses his brother dearly, 
Um, I, and I was saying this before that I think that we often say this like, oh, I, oh, I'll go visit this person later or I'll see this friend. And then if, they, if that person dies, we're like, God, if I just had one minute more with them, if I just had, and I think that that's some of Tommy's when he's looking back is he's missing, he's missing his brother deeply. Yeah, absolutely. And you can you can really tell. And it's a phenomenal performance. Um, and we're really excited for people to see it. Um, Thanks, Sarah. No worries. How does it feel? Because it's a brand new cast with new characters. So how does it feel? Because you're kind of like the conduit, I suppose, to these new people coming on board to this show. And you can show them kind of how power ticks. But also you have to create something new because it's a new family for people to see. How What was that like? Super interesting. You know, you had people like Chris Lofton, who plays Gennard Sampson, who was like an ultimate super power fan, who probably knows more specifics about the original power series than I do. I would ask him, I was, was this this? He's like, no, man, that was season four, episode six, because in season seven, episode seven, you do this. And he's somebody like that. And then somebody like Tommy Flanagan, who had never seen the show. So you have two totally different styles of actor, or at least in terms of knowledge of the power universe, and absolutely every bit as committed and beautiful and brilliant and present as, as the next. I mean, the cast was phenomenal from uh, fellow uh, Brits of Tommy Flanagan and Gabrielle Ryan, who are incredible people, to um, the other unbelievably uh, uh, talented and uh, beautiful Lily Simmons and her beautiful and talented brother, uh, 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 Shane Harper, who's a great human being, but also Isaac Keys, who plays this, plays Diamond Samson, who brings this, you know, semi stoic and, um, kind of wise wisdom of, of, of the streets uh, to the character as well. So I'm really, I think the cast is just outstanding and I can't wait for everybody to see. Absolutely. Yeah, I heard from a lot of cast members that you were quite helpful in getting them um, getting them involved in power and stuff. So, that, so they couldn't sing your praises enough. Oh, well, I'm, I'm grateful to hear that. But I, I really, I mean, I'm being super serious, Sarah. Like the, the vibe on set was so professional, so nice. People were on time and there to work, but, you know, with also with this freedom of like, hey, we're just a bunch of gypsy actors. Like, let's make something great. Like, let's really get into it. And I couldn't be more proud and humble to be part of that cast. Absolutely. And everyone puts in a really great performance. As you said, Isaac Keys and Tommy Flanagan, who kind of play these opposite end streetwise, like gang leaders um, that Tommy has to like bounce between, I guess, whilst creating his own own kind of like show in Chicago mm -hmm. so how, how did you develop that with those two characters I think I think I think that's a really fun dynamic actually to bounce back and forth and I think that um you know the the subject of race is still so taboo both in England and uh United States that um I think that it's it's really cool that we get to tackle it in a way that Tommy Egan is tackling it from you know not being ignorant to the fact that he's a white man in America but he's from a certain cultural background that is totally different than the Flints, who are rich and privileged. Even Walter Flynn, who may not have come from that, is viewing Tommy in a way that, it, oh, you're like us. And Tommy's nothing like them, but he looks like them. And I think that um, Tommy is expecting the black side of uh, town with, uh, you know, um, Gennard, but certainly Diamond, to be like, no, no, you get me. Like, we get each other. Like, I know I'm white and everything, but like, you get me, right? And he's like, nah, man, you know, not at first anyway. We may have to work together and there's something about you, but it's slow process. So, you know, it's not moving even as fast as it's moving in, in the storytelling is maybe not moving fast enough for Tommy or he's aware enough of like, OK, this isn't New York. You know, I'm not in Kansas. Dorothy's not in Kansas anymore. You no. Know? So it's, it's pretty, that, that's a fun, a skewed version of the world for Tommy to live through. Absolutely. Um, and he sort of he has great you have, I mean, you have great chemistry with a lot of cast members. I really love your um, chemistry with Gabrielle Ryan as well because she's yeah. kind of an interesting player in in the power universe because she's kind of again doing her own thing but she's got these connections um how does it feel developing that relationship with Gabrielle well she's an incredibly talented actor she's giving and she's just um a joy to be around she's just such a kind wonderful person so um that it, it, coupled with the fact that she's incredibly talented um I had a great time on set with her um I, I really um I, she's a great human being um I think that people are going to love the Gloria character especially when little secrets pop out about her past here and there so I wouldn't say it's necessarily a love triangle between Gloria and and Vic and Tommy but um 
definitely there are, will be rivalries and uh, she is a linchpin character for sure. Amazing, amazing. And speaking about the secrets in the past, it, like we've mentioned before, there's going to be a lot of backstory uh, for Tommy to be explored. How fun was it getting into specific elements of his story? Because it's even from season one, you're like, oh, wow, this is really I think interesting. That's one of the reasons why there's a spinoff is I think that they we never really dove into when we did a little bit, like even with Tony Teresi um, and, you know, the whole father thing and, and being there with Tommy and understanding. I think what I love and we have a, a few of them in the power book force is the quiet moments with Tommy, the thinking Tommy. What, and it's not like thinking like ghosts, like super fast strategizing. It's just thinking and being right there, right now. And I just, it just feels to me that that's something that people tell me. And even when I'm watching the show, it seems very relatable to myself are these quiet moments before the storm or after the storm. Um, and I'm excited for the audience to see some more of those moments too with them. Amazing. Is there any particular episode that you think you can't wait for audiences to watch? Or ten. You know, episode 10. Episode 10, is it? The finale. Oh, okay. oh it's the so finale. good. It's so good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's well written. It's certainly one of the best written episodes. And then also the director was Dion Taylor, who is a, a wonderful uh, director. He directed The Intruder that I was in uh, with Dennis Quaid and Megan Good and Michael Ely. Uh, he directed uh, Black and Blue uh, with Naomi Harris uh, and Tyrese. And he's just such a special director um, that he did an amazing, what he was able to accomplish in 12 days or whatever, he made a movie. I mean, it's a movie. So I can't wait. So so there's your there's your payoff for finishing the 10 episodes. <laughs> yeah. And they're all great. They're all great episodes. Kieran yeah. Hawks, who's also a, a, a Brit, an Englishman. Um, Kieran Hawks was, directed the most episodes of anybody. He directed three. Um, and he also directed on the Power Show. And he's an excellent director. And he really kind of came up with the vocabulary for the show in a lot of ways in terms of the shots and the look and the feel. Eve Rivera, who directed five, has directed across the board on the Power Universe, except for the original. Um, he's brilliant. We had uh, one of our uh, pr producers, Shanna Stein, directed one. And then Larissa Kondraki, who directed the pilot, directed on the power show as well. And I thought she just did an amazing job. Some of my absolute favorite moments is just what I was telling you, Sarah, uh, in the pilot is the, is that like the first two minutes when there's no dialogue. And, we, and, and yet we have a whole story of Tom. So I really enjoyed that. I really thought that was great. Absolutely. Um, I find it because because he's like driving to Chicago, I have this like thought in my head that um, without trying to give too much away, that it would make a good series of Tommy just going to different cities throughout America, trying to get to like the uh, West Coast. I think you're onto something. <laughs> right? How great would that be? Would that be something that you're willing to explore as Tommy's kind of like road trip across America causing havoc and mayhem? I don't see how we can't. Right? <laughs> it would be really good. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you could sum up this series, though, in three words for people to get like hooked on power uh, in Chicago, what would it be? Have you heard the theme song? <laughs> yeah. I would say power, powder, respect. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait for people to see the show. I was instantly blown away from the first episode, so. Well, you have very infectious energy, so I'm very happy to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, um, you and too. And I can't wait for the show to draw. Take care, my love. Thank you, Sarah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.